Welcome, honored guests, to the land of TMS. I am the Busybody Baroness, and this is a recap video from General Hospital's episode, well, really, technically yesterday, Wednesday, because today is Thursday. It's 3.30 in the morning, and the reason why I didn't get the recap out early is because I fell asleep right after I watched the episode twice. Um, so now I'm up. It's 3.30. I got, when it got me a Fiji and a payday. So let's do this. Cause I got to get right back up at 6.30 and get ready for one of the jobs. So let's go. We're going to start off at Sonny's restaurant where uh, he gave Dex the night off. And Dex says he was poking around the kitchen and found some recipe cards. And Sonny told him, um, that the recipe cards were, well, he didn't tell him what they were they he just told him that he used to cook you know he's been cooking since he was a kid which brings me back real quick to what we were talking about remember i think it was michael everybody wanted to know about staff i told y'all the corinthos never really had staff i think it's because the way carly and sunny grew up they didn't grow up with staff so they're like we're gonna take care of our own house and we're gonna you know they just have the bodyguards outside so anyway um sunny revealed that they were his recipe cards, and Dex was impressed and says that he tried his hand at the chicken piccata, and he asked if he wanted to try it. Dex served Sonny, um, and he said it was good, but it was missing something, and that's when he went and got some parsley. He invited Dex to join him, and the two were talking about, um, you know, kind of like what they both enjoy, cooking and eating and things like that. And that's when Sonny told him about uh, Brooklyn's grandmother, Gloria, and um, how he, she, she kind of showed him what a happy wife was supposed to look like. Uh, later on, though, Frank showed up and Sonny called him in and he told him that he needed to update him on the Pikeman thing. Sonny told Frank that they can go into his office and talk. And he told Dex he can go and shut the door behind him. That's when uh, Dex asked him, you know, like, pretty much, I thought I was part of the Pikeman thing, too. And he was like, yeah, well, just shut the door pretty much <laughs> before you leave. You tell him, like, you know, you're not anymore. That's what it seems like. So over at the hospital, um, Liesl slapped Elizabeth. I don't, I, again, I apologize for, I kept saying Dora was going to slap her. I do not know what I was saying. Um, slapped her across the face. Ben told her that that was out of line. Lisa lashed out and blamed Elizabeth for Britt's death because um, she kept silent about Esme, who the police were focused on instead of somebody else. That's when Elizabeth says that she's so sorry and she wished she could go back. And Lisa told her, you, she says, I wouldn't wish um, my pain on anybody. She says, but you will reap what you sow. And that's when Nina um, drug her off. Scott apologized to Elizabeth and says that she, you know, she got what she deserved. And Scott says, I love both of you and I don't want a riff going on. And Elizabeth urged him, she said, just go check on Lisa. I feel bad for Scott because Lisa is so upset. She's so emotional. You know, she's grieving so bad and she wants to blame somebody and she can't get her hands on Heather. So Elizabeth is the next closest thing. And then Scott is supporting Elizabeth. So she just feels like, oh my God. And I don't want to ramble, but it kind of reminds me of what my sister, when you know, my nephew um, got killed. The early Jan hands now. But me and my sister, we were talking maybe a week or two ago about what she went through. She felt like, uh, she told me she felt like people were coming at her from all over the place. It was like, she just couldn't, she felt like she couldn't properly grieve. It was like people just didn't understand and they were just being selfish and mean and still coming at her. So I think this is what Lisa is kind of feeling, if that makes sense to anybody. I I don't know. I just felt like I got it in that moment. It kind of reminded me of what my sister was describing, the way Lisa was acting out. It's like Heather, but then Elizabeth knew and then who else knew so I can slap everybody. You know what I mean? Because my child was killed and taken from me so everybody got to suffer but then in the meanwhile everybody else is going on with their lives and then you got elizabeth covering up stuff you know so when she slapped elizabeth i don't know why i got really emotional in that moment uh for lisa on lisa's behalf but anyway uh scott appeared because uh, nina took her off and scott showed up and albrick 
says that Heather's enabler is free and somebody has uh, chosen side. And that's when Scott told Liesl that he knows that this is a blow, but he wishes that she would have, you know, let him explain before confronting Elizabeth. And she asked, why did nobody, why um, nobody would call about his uh, precious Elizabeth? She says, of course, you know, she feels like that Scott is on Elizabeth's side more so than hers at this point. That's what I'm trying to say. I don't know what I wrote down. It's 3.30 in the morning. Basically, she's saying Scott values Elizabeth more than her. That is what she's saying. Okay, so TJ interrupted that argument to tell them that the test results are in, but Terry couldn't give it to him because she was in a meeting. He says he'll give them to him. He took them in the office. He told Lisa that um, the indicator said that she is a confirmed match for willow nina hugged her and cried my daughter is going to live that's when tj explained everything to albrick um about the testing that she will have to undergo he says i know you're a doctor but if you have any questions you know um and yes lisa is a doctor and but in this moment she's not she's she's got so much going on you know she's not thinking as a doctor so yeah she's gonna have some questions because the first thing she says, she says, well, I'd be able to save her. You know, this means she'll live, you know. And TJ says, well, you know, it's no guarantees. These are things that this is how you know she's not thinking right. Lisa knows. You know what I'm saying? She would have been able to tell Nina, like, you know, I'm going to do my best. Poor Lisa. The look on her face. I could not stop crying for Lisa yesterday. Um. Anyway, TJ left because, you know, they said they wanted to proceed immediately. So he left to make arrangements for Liesl's physical. And, you know, because she's older, he did bring that up. But Liesl, she's horse healthy, honey. Did you see the way she reared back on Elizabeth without her shoulder getting kinked up? Put it in the comments if you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, Nina asked Liesl how, you know, she has no words pretty much to thank her. She says, how can I ever thank you? Liesl says, Willow is family and they take care of their own. And that's when Nina started crying about how grateful she was for her and they embraced and Liesl encouraged her to do what comes next. And that's when Nina rushed out. So, you know, she's going to go over to Willow. She's probably, she's going to go and tell Willow about um, having a match, but We'll get to it because we know that it's some people over, right? It's the hospice nurse. Carly's there. They're, they're planning the wedding right now. Uh, Lisa uh, was telling Scott, you know, tripping out on Scott about him helping Elizabeth get away with murder. He, she says, Brit's blood is on your hands as well. That's when Scott explained to, Elizabeth, um, explained to Lisa that Elizabeth got caught up in a big mess and there was no evidence to implicate Heather as the hook at that time. Scott said he was, you know, sorry. He told her that there was no way to save Britt. That's when Lisa said that Elizabeth could have stopped Britt's death. And um, now Liz is free because of him. She yelled at Scott and said, leave me alone. And she walked out the office. In another part of the hospital, Finn and Elizabeth were talking. And um, Liz feels like she'll probably have to watch her back as Lisa might be out for revenge. And Finn offered his support, and um, Elizabeth says she'll need more. She'll need more support than he knows. That's when she says um, that it's gonna definitely be a ripple effect, and you know she doesn't want him to stand by her and get caught in the crossfire. He says he doesn't care what people think about him, honey. You know, cause he loved Elizabeth. She stood by his side when he shoved Peter August down the stairwell and drug him his body and put him in the freezer. And he says that it is his turn to stand by her she thanked him and but she says this is something that she has to face on her own and she told him uh that he'll you know she told him black he told her that he'll be there if she needs him um again i know everybody says why did elizabeth do this what was she trying to prove but again i'm saying that esme would have told on her when she got her memory back and it would have been so much worse they would have threw the book at her but now that they let me get, because I'm jumping ahead, but I'm going to, we seen it. We seen it. Nicholas isn't in the damn stable tack room thing, right? Okay. <laughs> so they're definitely going to blame him for everything, for sure. Let's go to the gay house, though, real quick, where Michael um, and Willow were on the couch, and he asked her, did she need anything? She is just so cute. And she said, yeah, just one thing. And she put her finger up to her lips. As he was leaning in for a kiss, though, um, they got a knock on the door, and it was Carly and Joss. Because Willow told them to come over so they could do wedding things. 
Willow told Joss and Carly that she called them over, you know, to talk about the wedding. But she said she wants the day to be a day of celebration and not focus on her being sick. She says she wants it to be a happy day, and Carly says she'll make sure of it. Um, Willow asked her, does she promise? And, you know, Carly says, yes, I promise. Uh, she also, Willow also asked Jocelyn to be one of the maids of honors. I don't know. I got married in the courthouse. What is it? Maid of honor? Because I know Carly is the matron of honor because she's older. Um, bridesmaids. Yeah, that's what it is. Joss is going to be a bridesmaid, not a bridesmaid, not a maid of honor. Because I assume Sasha would be her maid of honor. Right? Yeah. I should have wrote it down exactly what she said. <laughs> she wanted them to be. But anyway, um, Michael came back downstairs. Uh, and Yeah, bridesmaid. I did. I wrote it down on the side. So, and Carly's going to be the maid of honor. Michael came down. Carly was crying and accept. They embraced. Uh, Willow got up to look for, look for her tablet because they were going to look at dresses. And when she got up, she almost fell. And thank God Michael was right there to catch her because she would have fell backwards. And it looked like she probably would have bust her head on that fireplace thing, wouldn't it? That would have been a really awful fall. But Willow insisted that she, um, she was okay. She just stood up too fast, which it looked like she did. Like, we know she's sick, but she was so excited. She did. She jumped up a little bit too quick. Um... But that's when, you know, Michael told her, you know, you need to take a nap. You got to go upstairs and lay down. And she looked just like, it's like when you were sending a child. You ever send a child to their room? Like, it's nap time, okay? And they look so sad. Like, but I don't want to miss anything. And then you're like, okay, you stay up for five more minutes. That's what I got from Willow. It was like, oh, my God, I'm so tired, but I want to do this. And Mike, she said, this is going to be a really quick nap. You know, and Carly and Josh, she said, we'll be right here when you wake up. And that was just so beautiful, you know. And then she told, before she went, though, she told Carly that she was like a mother to her. And, oh, it was just so, just, it was, a, I don't know, because I'm emotional anyway. I've been emotional for the last three months. But this right here, I don't know, this episode, I was just crying like a fool, y'all. And that's probably why I took my ass to sleep like a baby. <laughs> You know, when the child just cry, cry, cry. He's oh, I'm going to sleep. That's probably why I went to sleep so early. Um, but anyway, it was a knock on the door after Willow went upstairs, and it was the hospice nurse. And that's, you know, when Michael let that nurse in, that's when he broke down with his mom and sister. It was like, this was just too, that was too much for him to bear, wasn't it? He says, I can't believe I'm saying hospice. And that's when Carly told Michael how sorry she was. She says, um, but they still have time left with Willow, and they, they're they going to make it amazing. Michael realized that there's something he can do for Willow, and that's when they got um, interrupted uh, by Nina. She called. She didn't show up. She called. Michael ignored the call and says um, that he can't deal with this right now, and that's when she called back. And Michael said he can't believe her. He did answer. He says it's not a good time. And that's when Nina says, don't hang up. You're going to want to hear what I have to say. Later on, Willow woke up from her nap and she came downstairs and she said, what's wrong? Because Michael and them were just standing there in shock. Um, and Michael says, nothing is wrong. She says, he told her, he said, we found a match. And that's when Willow cried and, you know, they embraced all right, let's go over to where me and Dimitri is. Uh, me and Dimitri work at Windermere because over at the stables, um, my boyfriend Bennett showed up with his beard and he was talking to Dante because he had to help Dante open the lock because you know. But no, let me stop lying. He didn't have to help Dante. He asked Dante. <laughs> <laughs> he asked Dante if he needed some help getting the lock off. And Dante says, no, I got this. But it was taking Dante a long time. I imagine um, sexy bearded Bennett would have got that lock off in one pop, honey. But um, once they got the door open, he says, I guess we have a lead on Nicholas Cassadine. And Dante says, uh, Nicholas was definitely here. And he picked up his watch. And he says that uh, Nicholas' initials were on it. Just imagine, like, just putting your initials on everything, like jewelry and stuff, just to have that much going on. Like, I don't know if I would want to be that rich. But anyway, let me stop. Because y'all know I'm just so fascinated. <laughs> so fascinated with how much money Nicholas and them supposed to have on this show. Um, Dante asked Ava if she's uh, seen the watch before. And she said, yes, yeah, I gave it to Nicholas. Oh, okay, it was a gift. It was a gift. It was a gift. But still... But still, right? Because they got them Cassadine rings and everything. Um, 
Anyway, Dante said the watch was broke. He says, when was the last time you saw Nicholas wearing the watch? She says, I saw him the day before Valentine's Day. At 7.30, he left. Dante says, well, that's the watch stopped at 8 o'clock. And that's when Dante bagged the watch and says they'll need to sweep the area for any more evidence. Before Sexy Bearded Bennett left out the tack room, though, y'all, he said he made a good point. He said, listen, he probably had a stash bag in here. You know what I mean? And Dante was like, yep. And then did y'all notice Ava and Austin? Austin was like, yeah, <laughs> yes, exactly. Probably. <laughs> and that's not what he said. But to look on Austin's face and play like, mm-hmm, good catch, Bearded Bennett. But um, later on, everybody returned to the mansion, and they asked Dante, uh, I'm sorry, Dante asked Ava if she knew uh, what Nicholas would have been looking for in the tack room, and that's what Ava said, she don't know, and that's when Bearded Benny said, you know, he probably had a stash bag, um, and that's when Bennett asked Ava uh, if Nicholas told her where he was going, like, did Nicholas mention where he was going, and she says no she doesn't know he didn't say anything she says he just screams at me he says he said he was done with me and poor charles <laughs> and then dante thanked her for her time and then that's when ava walked them out austin was confused <laughs> after everybody left this is gonna be so much fun for me to watch i love austin and ava right now austin was confused and asked if ava was sure nicholas was dead and ava says yeah, I'm sure I checked his pulse. His heart wasn't beating. Austin says, well, where is he? Because their bodies just don't get up and walk away on their own because, you know, through the, my learnings in medical school. And that's when they flashed over. Y'all gen hands are so much fun for me. Y'all are so right. Because y'all know I used to do spoilers, but the only spoilers I do now is what everybody gets to see on the 16 second preview. Um... Because I just like it the way it is. I like to see what y'all gonna say. So y'all was right. Mason. <laughs> but why didn't they show it? Put it in the comments. I would have loved to see how Mason saved Nicholas. Because we saw Mason. He was on the phone with somebody and told them that the prince was stable. But he was on life support and sleeping soundly. And that's when we saw Nicholas in the hospital and hooked up to a lot of machines. And then, of course, it went off. Um... He is in Pawtuck. When Nicholas, are they going to call uh, Victor? Well, no, Nicholas probably don't want to talk to Victor because he know Victor will make it a mess. But anyway, because y'all, I got to go to bed. It's 346. Let me run through this 16-second preview. We're going to see Gregory um, admiring Alexis. He says you're going to have the, you know, you have the scoop of the century. Diane and Robert caught up. And Brooklyn confided in Maxie. He, um, she thinks that Chase is interested in someone or someone is interested in Chase, which we I think she thinks it's Sasha, but we know that it's Blaze. And my precious Christina is back in the house and she is going to make a discovery. So everybody, y'all know we miss Christina. We don't think we she gets enough screen time at all. All right. Thanks for listening to me, Jen Hens. I'm about to go ahead and edit this real quick. Um, leave a like uh, before you leave and I'll catch y'all in the comments.